Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to yet another plural lesson. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. If I were you, I would feel very much fed up with German plurals by now. So uh, even more, I appreciate that you're still coming back for more. And I can tell you it's going to get much more fun after this, I promise. And I was actually thinking about doing maybe another uh, culture lesson for you guys. Um, so I would just answer one, one or two questions about uh, what interests you most concerning German culture. So please just feel free to leave me a comment down below which topic you would like me to cover. To cover. So um, I have some ideas of my own, but if you guys have a preference, pre uh, please just let me know and uh, I'll try to, uh, to talk about those things that are interesting to you. Okay, so for today we will have another plural lesson concerning a new suffix. Actually, it's just three in one, or better to say one in three, we're actually just talking about the suffix n, but depending on the phonetic landscape of the noun, this can take several different forms and shapes, none of which require a vowel change for a change. So let's have a look at what this may look like today. Let's start easy, okay? First of all, we have a couple of nouns who will only take n in the end. This is the easy part. This applies to masculine and feminine nouns that already end in an E in their singular form, where we only need to add the plural N in order to form their plural. This applies, for example, to die Tasche, die Taschen, uh, which means the bag. Yeah, so it is already, it's a feminine noun. It is two syllabic. In this case, it ends in an E. And we apply plus N for the plural, die Tasche, die Taschen. Same for die Flasche, die Flaschen, bottle or bottles. And also for the description of the people of a country, yeah? So the Germans or the English, in the sense of the English people, yeah? Or the French people, people is normally implied. Uh, we will say der Deutsche for one person, yeah? One German person. Die Deutschen for Germans in general. Same goes for der Franzose, one French person, or die Franzosen, the French, in general. And we do that to most people whom we derive from the names of the countries. I can think of a couple of exceptions, um, but in most of the cases, this is how it works, okay? So this was about ending plus n only. Now, it gets a little bit more Mm, it's not tricky. It's really rather quite simple. Yeah, so let's let me show you how it works. We will apply the ending en to many, not all, masculine and feminine nouns that can have a wide list of possible endings. But all of these endings um, end in a consonant. Okay, so that is an important part. And we will apply plus en to those. And that is the, the reason because going from a final consonant to another plural consonant feels uncomfortable and weird to the tongue. So this is actually just another filling E that we already know from regular verb conjugations that end in D, T, N, M. Yes, exactly, those four. D, T, N, M, because the S sounds were about something else. Okay, so we had a filling E after the verb stem of those um, of those verbs so that we would ease the pronunciation, yeah, the transition from the verb stem to the conjugation ending. And we kind of just do the same here from the noun stem to the plural ending, yeah? So that is all this E is about. It's because of the consonant here. So we can consider this extra E as a filling vowel between the noun ending and the plural ending N. What does this look like now? By default, you can imagine that if you compare it to all of the other rules that we have previously discussed before, yeah? If the noun is not monosyllabic and it ends in a consonant, you can try to add plus en as the plural ending because that is your best guess. For monosyllabic words, monosyllabic nouns, meaning those that only consist of one syllable, we had a different set of suffixes at our disposal that are more likely to work in that in that circumstance, in that phonetic environment. But as soon as you have more than one syllable and you have a consonant at the end, this is the best ending you can try and you're most likely going to be right. More precisely speaking, the following endings always take en in the plural forms. For masculine nouns, those nouns ending in end, as in der Student, 
which takes the plural form die Studenten. The ending ant, as in der Musikant, die Musikanten. The ending ist, as in der Polizist, which then goes die Polizisten. And nouns ending, uh, masculine nouns ending in or, as in der Motor, plural die Motoren. Okay, we have more than one syllable. We have a consonant at the end, we add en, and we are right here. There are a couple of feminine noun endings, actually quite quite a bit more than for the masculine ones, where you can always safely apply plus en and it's going to be the right one, yeah? So those feminine nouns ending in ion, as in die Nation, die Nationen. It's quite noisy outside, can you hear that? It's either a plane landing next to my house or they're picking up the trash. I guess it's the second option. Okay. Ion, die Nation, die Nationen. Ich, die Politik, die Politiken. Although this is really quite rare. I haven't, I haven't really heard that very often, yeah? Nouns ending in Heit, as in die Krankheit. Sickness or illness, yeah? Krankheiten. Feminine nouns ending in Kite, die Einsamkeit. Einsamkeiten, loneliness. Uh, schafft, die Freundschaft. Die Freundschaften, friendship, tät, as in Nationalität, Nationalitäten, and with the ending ung, as in die Übung, exercise, which then takes the plural form Übungen. So there are two ways you can go about this. You can try to study these endings individually, which, yeah, Will not take you too much effort, frankly speaking. If you can, this is the better choice, okay? Try to do that. If you cannot or you, or you don't want to invest the, the effort at this point in time, just refer to this rule, more than one syllable, ending consonant, add plus en, and it's probably going to end up at the same solution, okay? So this was actually very comparable to plus n, just that because here we already had a vowel as the last letter in the singular word, plus n was enough. Here we do not have that, so we need to fill the e in between in order to get to the same ending. Now, there is one last option, the ending n-e-n, okay, which is a very particular case. We only apply it to a certain kind of feminine nouns. I'm, sure you, I'm going to show you now. So, when we have a masculine noun, we can form their feminine counterparts usually by adding the ending en, yeah, in to the end of the masculine version of the noun. And we normally do that with job titles or nouns that describe people in some sense, yeah. For example, as in der Kellner, which is the masculine version of the waiter in a restaurant, okay, we add plus en to make the feminine equivalent of that, the waitress, die Kellnerin. Okay, we do the same with der Student, masculine student, die Studentin, feminine. This is not yet the plural ending. That would be Studenten, en. This is Studentin, en, feminine, and still singular. Okay, so please don't mix that up, yeah? Der Nachbar, der Nachbar, the neighbor, yeah? Um, bear in mind the pronunciation of here because it, it comes after an A, Nachbar. The feminine neighbor is going to be die Nachbarin. And you already know this word definitely because that's me. Der Lehrer, masculine teacher, die Lehrerin, feminine teacher. And uh, most, most of the students I'm currently teaching have a really hard time pronouncing those two R's in the word. So please try to speak after me. Yeah? I'll pronounce it for you twice. Lehrerin. Lehrerin. All of the sound is happening in the back of your throat. There is no tongue rolling. I wish I could do that because then my Spanish would be way better than it is. You don't have to roll or twist your tongue. Yeah, It's not happening with the tip of your tongue. It's actually just happening with the very far back part of your, of your tongue that kind of squeezes the air through a tight hole in after your esophagus, is that the word? I think so, yeah? Lehrerin. Okay, so now that we have, uh, we have used the masculine base noun, we have made the feminine version out of it, and now 
the, the ending NEN comes into play when we want to form the plural versions of those feminine versions. Okay, so we will ignore the masculine parts for the time being. We will only return to those feminine versions here, which then double their N, yeah, because they all end in an N now. We double that N before taking this EN ending that we discussed on the previous page as the plural ending. Okay, so it's actually just three steps. We take der Student, we make a die Studentin, feminine version, singular. Now we double the N of Studentin. This is why we have double N here. And then because this is more than one syllable and it ends in a consonant, we need to apply the plural ending EN. So it's the same logic that I already explained to you about uh, five minutes ago, just that it's a very particular case for feminine persons or job titles that take this double N, yeah? This is the exception here. The waitress, die Kellnerin in singular, now becomes die Kellnerinnen, the waitresses. Die Nachbarin, sorry, wrong pronunciation myself, die Nachbarin, neighbor, the neighboress, <laughs> The neighboresses, die Nachbarinnen, um, feminine plural, die Lehrerin, feminine teacher singular, die Lehrerinnen, feminine teachers plural. And uh, that is already all about those three noun categories that are actually just three different versions of the same uh, plural category. Yeah. So in the end, all of those three endings that I showed you, plus N, plus EN, plus NEN are just different versions of plus N. Only that sometimes we're going to need a filling letter uh, that needs to be added in order to make the N ending attachable, okay? We are just adding a couple of letters in between to make the plural N attachable to the, mm, the base noun, depending on the phonetic landscape of that noun. So I think that was, that was not too complex, not too complicated, not too difficult. We will practice that in depth in the exercise and revision lesson in the lesson after the next one. Yeah, the next one is going to be quite short. I hope I'll try. I promise I will try. And for now, I just would like, would just like to, to tell you guys, please don't give up. Um, we are going to have one more uh, theory lesson on plurals only. And then we're going to be done with this part and we'll have very big revision exercise section so that you, have, you will have mastered the plurals in German once and for all. Uh, I believe you can make it. Thank you for your motivation and for your support. And I'm going to see you again in the next lesson. Bis dann. Tschüss.